everybody, and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43, and tonight we are taking our very first look at the new Tier 8 German battleship, Frederick de Grosse. That's as close as I got, boys. Uh, FDG for short. That's what I'll be calling it from here on out. Because every time I say Grossa, all I think is the GK, and then I just get myself all confuzzled. And I'm fairly confident during the stream yesterday, I was calling it the FDR because I'm an idiot. But it's the FDG, guys. So first of all, let's look at our commander. We are running Henry J. Hyde with Haruna and Franz von Hipper as our inspirations. We've got Flammel Cannoneer, Porcupine, Marksmanship, and Master Mechanic as our uh, perks. And we do run Fight Fire with Fire. Okay? This perk comes in real handy for those uh, HE spammers, okay? You know how many times this has saved my bacon in these uh, secondary builds? I'm telling you. Between Massachusetts and this, it's pretty, pretty, pretty special. I love it. Now, if you do not have Henry Hyde, you can either run Otto Ciliax or Franz von Hipper. Otto Ciliax is your tank build commander. Uh, and then I would run Franz von Hipper and Haruna as your inspirations. If you don't have inspiration or Haruna, maybe Franz von Hipper and run something either Palo de Revel to help the reload or run uh, Andrew Cunningham or Azure Lane Scharnhorst if you need a little bit extra dispersion buff. Um, but uh, again, Auto Ciliax, same sort of build. You're running, uh, you should see the other guy for that damage uh, control party cooldown. And then Porcupine firefighter and then master mechanic for the extra damage controls or not damage controls but repair parties and then of course with this build you actually get will to rebuild so if you're running a division and you want to do some uh, some memes with secondaries and get up in there running auto ciliax is not a bad idea because then you get to have the secondaries plus you get to have will to rebuild and you guys can basically become zombie ships and never die well i mean you can still obviously die but it's much harder to get rid of you but as you can see, I usually run uh, Andrew Cunningham and Franz Von Hipper with this particular build uh, to give you a little bit of a buff to the dispersion. Uh, obviously, Andrew Cunningham doesn't actually buff the dispersion. He buffs the shell grouping. So it's not necessarily making your shells more accurate. It just means that the shells are going to stay closer to one another rather than spread apart. Okay? So keep that in mind. And obviously, Franz Von Hipper is the complete opposite. He is your accuracy commander. We got Flamble Cannoneer. Uh, I know a lot of people say that they don't run this perk, but honestly, the extra range and the the grouping is nice. Uh, we got gyrating grill bits up in there, marksmanship, and the emergency specialist. Now, honestly, I think this is actually the wrong choice here. I think you should, instead of going emergency specialist, this just shows how long it's been since I've uh, run this particular commander. But reaching out XSL is, in my opinion, the better option if you're going full accuracy build, because... When you reduce the uh, damage control party cooldown, and uh, I mean, we, we talk about this in the other one, the you should see the other guy thing. This is the same thing as this, basically. But uh, this one actually does not have the debuff to the damage control party duration that this has. Emergency Specialist reduces the damage control party duration by 70%. What that means is, instead of it taking 30 seconds or whatever to go into cooldown once you trigger it, it takes like 10 seconds, which means that you're almost certainly going to be set right back on fire or take a flood immediately after damage conning, and then you're just struggle busting it. So, in my experience, I hate this perk, Emergency Specialist. But like I said, this one, it increases your chance of catching fire, but it decreases your cooldown and doesn't decrease the uh, the time of the actual damage con itself. So that's why I don't mind running this over, you know, and not running this. This one is just terrible. But on this one, we're running uh, Robert Gijard and Andrew Cunningham. Honestly, I, I knowing what I know now, Robert Gijard's not the right choice here because you have the penetration to do whatever you need to do with your, your guns, especially on the FDG. You would be better off running uh, Von Essen here uh, because that increases your penetration angles, which the Germans struggle with. The Germans have not good penetration angles. Now, Bismarck has been buffed recently with better pin angles, uh, which has made it a lot better. 
But just keep that in mind. If you're going for an accuracy build and you want this, maybe go Cunningham and go with uh, Von Essen for that ricochet angles um, increase. Okay? So that's the commander out of the way. I know it took a little longer than normal, but the German is one of those that ha people tend to run the most different commanders on, and I wanted to go over that for everybody. Okay? Let's look at our loadout. We are running Aiming Systems Mod 1. We are running the Steering Gears Mod 2. We are running Concealment System Mod, and we are running Secondary Battery Mod 3. Okay? Now, you could swap this for the secondary if you want to go full secondaries, but I personally like to buff the main guns because they're the ones that are doing most of the damage. So, that's just me. If you want to go for the extra uh, ac accuracy and stuff on your secondaries, go for it. This one doesn't actually need it as much because it's more like Brandenburg and Gross Occur for secondaries. They tend to go directly at the target, not quite as much as the uh, Americans do. Uh, Americans are like laser beams when they fire their secondaries. Um, but the Frederick de Grossa, the GK, and the Brandenburg all have very, very good, accurate secondaries, whereas Bismarck tends to go everywhere. I don't know if you guys have ever watched Bismarck secondaries going off. Even with a booster, the Bismarck secondaries tend to just spread out so much. But, um, but yeah, so that's, that's our build. We are fully upgraded, and we are running the 420 millimeter guns rather than the stock 406s. I've heard a lot of people say that the 406s are pretty good. I haven't tested them yet, so maybe I'll do another video with the 406s just to see if they are better. Uh, I've heard a lot of people saying a lot of good things, but personally, I've had a lot of good luck out of the 420 so far, to be honest. Um, the loadout, obviously, we have our four heals thanks to our extra two... Um, damage con or repair parties we've got our secondary boosters because memes and sonar uh, this thing does have the six kilometer detection of ships that the gk gets so that's a very nice thing we're not running any boosters we do have the alpha test flag and the hunter camo on this we made a a uh, permanent hunter camo for this so uh i like to upgrade all of my top tier ships with permanent camos um just because i just i don't want to spend camos all the time to run them they're the ones that i run the most so I don't want to have to keep spending camo on them. But uh, survivability is 88,850 hit points, which I believe is the maximum hit points for Tier 8 battleships currently in the game. It also has a 25% torpedo damage reduction, which isn't particularly good, but it's right there with the Iowa-class battleships. I always compare things to Iowa because that's the one ship that I know the best. So uh, yeah, it's right there in the same ballpark. Don't be taking torpedoes if you can avoid them. Okay. Artillery, you have the 420mm L48 DRH LC40s that you have 8 of in a uh, 4x2 configuration. They reach out to 20.4 kilometers with this build and reload in just 29 seconds. 180 degree turn time is 32.7 seconds. HE shell maximum damage is 5,000 with a 41% chance to set fires. And the AP shell maximum damage is uh, actually a little low with the 13,500. Now, obviously, with our build, we're running Porcupine, so we don't get the uh, gyrating drill bits buff to the uh, AP damage. So that's why the AP damage is a little bit low, but it does feel a little bit lower than the, um, the others that do run gyrating drill bits. Secondary armament, you have the 105mm L65 Doppel C38s that you get 16 of, reaching out to 9.6 kilometers with this build, reloading in just 2.7 seconds. They fire HE with a maximum damage of 1,200 and a 5% chance to set fires. Then you have the uh, 150mm L55 SK C28s that you get 12 of, reaching out to 9.6 kilometers, reloading in 6 seconds, firing HE with a maximum shell damage of 1,700 and an 8% chance to set fires. For AA defense, it's, it's German. It doesn't have the best AA. It's not the worst AA. It's not the Russian or the Japanese, but it's right there in the, it's okay, but don't count on it. 20 millimeter flak veerling 38 you get 24 of those doing 38 damage per second reaching out to just two kilometers that's the main problem a good chunk of your aa is very short range uh, so especially against the um the german carrier and the um russian carrier in particular um, they can attack you from further out but uh the german carrier is going to come over top of you and citadel you through the through the deck because that's what they do but 37 millimeter flak lm42s you get uh 52 of those 
doing 268 damage per second, reaching out to just 3.5 kilometers. Again, showcasing that their, their AA is very short range. Okay, most of the good AA in this game is usually in that four to five kilometer range, which kind of gives you a little bit of a standoff. Well, with this, it's not. It's it, You got to wait till they get right up on you and they're dropping their bombs before you can actually shoot them down. 105 millimeter L65 Doppel C38s though, you get 16 of those doing 133 damage per second and those reach out to 4.5 kilometers. Maneuverability maximum speed's pretty good at 30 knots. Uh, again, we're not right at, we're not running gyrating drill bits, so we get to keep our full speed. And it has a turning circle radius of 940 meters with a rudder shift of 14.9 seconds. So not too bad, but not great in the rudder shift. Um, and the turning circle is actually not too bad either. It's kind of it, well, it feels familiar for me because I run the Iowa a lot, so it's a little worse than the Iowa, but not that bad. And the rudder shift is okay. Concealment, 13.7 kilometers with this build, with an 11.5 kilometer detectability by air. Two is always guaranteed, and five or 15.4 kilometer smoke firing penalty. Armor is where this thing stands out from the rest of the tier eights, as you would expect. It is German, it's going to have good armor. So let's go over what makes this armor so good. Well, it's got an icebreaker bow, much like the GK. It is a 60 millimeter icebreaker bow that also extends into a 150 millimeter belt before the main belt. So if you angle, ain't nothing going through. And as long as the Yami shoots waterline, you can actually not be overmatched by the Yami on the front. They have to shoot up towards the top. And you can see the icebreaker actually extends higher up on this particular ship uh, than even other German battleships uh, prior to this. So because that extends a little higher, you have to aim basically deck line if you're going to try to overmatch this thing in a Yami. So keep that in mind. Uh, that's why you see these things rushing Yamis quite a, quite a bit. I've seen quite a few of these guys try to, to rush a Yami. And you guys know, if you get a broadside of a Yami, it's GG. Yami cannot survive any battleship in a broad, broadside approach. If you can get to a drive-by on a Yami, you will win that 99.999% of the time with a single shot. Okay? So, uh, if you can get there, that's half the battle. And this thing can get there, especially with that tough nose. And most people don't understand overmatching. They just know Yami goes through everything, right? So, that's why they struggle against the German battleships in particular because they have those icebreaker bows and Yami cannot overmatch at the waterline like they normally do on everybody else. So keep that in mind. It comes in real handy. Obviously we've got a 38 millimeter outside armor uh, lower belt which is nice the torpedo protection um, and then of course we have the actual uh, belt. Let's get over here to this. We've got for the top we have a hundred millimeters at the top. You can see that. 100 millimeters and then 145 and 300 millimeters for the main belt and this is obviously a turtle back configuration so keep that in mind though just because you have turtle back does not mean you sit broadside to everybody because even while we may not citadel you at close range we are still going to be hitting you for big chunks of damage so keep that in mind do not just sit there broadside in these things you will die Get rid of the guns, and we can see the actual Citadel is slightly raised, but again, with that turtle back, uh, you're at closer ranges, and by closer ranges, I mean basically anything inside 10 kilometers. Um, the only time you really need to fear getting Citadel, usually without some fluky uh, Citadel where we go through the cheek or uh, get the weird shots down into the, the deck, without that, the only time you really need to worry in these German battleships with Turtleback is at like 15, 16 kilometers and beyond. And with this thing's ability to shoot at 20 kilometers, you've got to be aware of that because anybody that shoots at you at those ranges, that plunging fire will not give a crap about your Citadel. It's going straight in and you're going to have a bad day. So keep that in mind. Overview, ironclad, above average armor thickness, greater resistance to all forms of armor penetration. Tough, above average base HP rating, and superior AP damage, above average AP shell damage. And again, I think I called this out on stream because I said, oh, I, don't, I don't think so because it's actually worse. But that's solely due to the fact that we are running, uh, we are not running gyrating drill bits on this particular build because we go with the hybrid build with hide. So if you were running gyrating drill bits, your, your um, AP damage would be higher. 
Um, but Frederick de Grossa, you have a project developed as part of the program for a large-scale expansion of the German Navy. A further development of Bismarck-class battleships with more powerful main guns and enhanced AA defenses. She was designed in 1939, never built. So, let's take a look at her. Again, she's not a bad ship. I mean, I, I like the look of the modern, um, the modern German battleships. I may not like to play them, but they do make some good-looking ships. Um, they're just, they look the part, you know, they got the angles, they got the little, uh, ball turrets everywhere, whether it be for radar or fire control or spotlights, like it just looks futuristic, you know, um, uh, thanks to the people that pointed out that if I zoom in, I can actually go all the way around the ship that does make it kind of nice. But anyway, with that being said, let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so we're going to be on shattered and I'm not going to lie to you guys. This is kind of the perfect map for this ship and for any of the German battleships to be honest but this is kind of the perfect map for this ship and we are going to take s serious advantage of all of the cover that, uh, that this map allows for us to close the distance um, you're gonna see pretty early on uh, that this ship is actually pretty nasty and you guys know I don't just compliment German ships to compliment them you guys know I'm pretty critical of them most of the time but for the most part, I've been enjoying the FDG. It's been a lot of fun, surprisingly. I think I'm not joking. It feels like a more agile GK, which I think one of the biggest issues that I have with the GK, like I like the guns of the GK, I like how tanky it is, but the problem is it's so freaking big that everybody targets it because they know it's easy damage. It's got over 100,000 hit points, everybody knows it. So they target the, the uh, GK and you just can't get out the way. Like, you can try to tank all you can, but, I mean, when you've got fire starters and battleships and, you know, everything coming after you, and you're a thousand foot long ship, I don't know what the actual length of the GK is, but it's big. But huge turning circle, like, terrible rudder shift on the GK. It's very, very difficult to not take the damage. And uh, even the best players out there, man, if you get if you get focused the way the GK tends to get focused and the Weimar turns all the way out which is unfortunate we thought we were gonna catch him actually he didn't turn out he just slowed down but uh, you can see we are pushing up we've got an Izumo over there we've also got a rune out here and I'm not gonna lie immediately go out here to attack this rune look at what the rune is doing the rune is charging now we know what the runes plans are now here we actually showcase the agility a little bit we do take one torpedo uh, right at the, uh, the beginning of the belt, so it was reduced quite a bit, down to 40, I think it was like 4,700 damage. But, uh, yeah, we're going to push up on this room. Now, we know that the German cruisers are notorious for getting up close and personal. They have the turtleback armor, even though it isn't quite the battleship turtleback. It still usually allows them to survive the initial shot up close. Now, we have an FDG sitting here broadside. We're going to reach out, touch this man. Uh, we also disappear immediately behind the island, which means we don't get shot back. And so we get a nice little 7,100 damage. And I say that as he fires HE at us and misses. Whew. Could have could have hit us there. Glad he didn't. But the the rune is literally a super hipper, right? The hipper is a very good ship, even though I don't pretend I don't pretend to like the ship at all. Like I'm just not a fan of the hipper. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's a bad ship and the rune is an extension of that and uh, Because of that you know what you need to expect this rune comes out. He's full broadside Why would he be full broadside easy? He's going for torpedoes now We knock out one of his torp tubes right off the bat, but I have no idea what the ship has I'm just assuming it's got at least what the hipper has which is two launchers on either side of the ship so we knock out one and we have the secondaries doing what they do and you can see these secondaries ripping this rune apart that's what i mean you see how accurate those secondaries are that's what i'm talking about now obviously he's going away our secondary booster is now on cooldown but you can see they're still hitting the target and we get our first blood with the fdg and surprise 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 to no one there are torpedoes on the way who could have seen that coming now, those torpedoes got spotted right at the end of our uh, hydro, so we're going to be able to turn around and get back, and we're going to go ahead and start trying to get shots on the uh, the other two battleships that are trying to sail over there. Now, Izumo has come over to this side of the map, so we're going to introduce him, uh, make sure he's aware that, you know, we see him. And this is where I'm saying, like, this map is so good for this ship. It really is. 
it's got more agility than the uh, GK, so you're allowed to you're, you're able to move this ship around a lot better, uh, which means you can take advantage of those broadsides that this thing offers, even with the the bigger guns. Like I found, these bigger guns are just plenty accurate. Sure, you get some wonky shots here and there, but they're plenty accurate, even at extreme ranges. I'm talking like max range, 20, 20 kilometer shells, and we're still landing multiple shells per salvo usually. Um, now, our main got very lucky there. That is, the Izumo may not be the tankiest ship in the world, but by God, if that thing catches you broadside, holy mother of God, that hurts. I'm not joking. Those four tens, slap. But uh, speaking of slap, it looked like that FDG or main, I don't remember which one it was. Whoever it was just fired at our main probably just slapped him because that would look pretty accurate. But we're expecting the battleship that was trailing, or I guess leading, to come around the corner. We also see the Fletcher in the middle of the map, so we're going to try to lead him here. Uh, again, doing our job to try to help the team get rid of a destroyer. Uh, it's not a guaranteed hit, and the island kind of screwed us over, but we do manage to get one overpin on him, so we showcase that we are trying to help get rid of the little guy. It's the only destroyer they have. If we can take him out, that's huge for the team. Uh, we also knew that we were going to be getting shot back. I'm cognizant of the fact that Jean Bart's lining us up potentially to shoot us. We do go dark here. The destroyer's almost dead. He did take a shot, so we are not just staying broadside. We're trying to turn out here. But we get all of our guns to bear, and all of his shells go short because we were continuing our turn away. So we managed to make him miss, which is huge. And again, that comes down to the turning ability of this ship. It may not be the best. But once you do start to get this thing to turn, it does make people miss occasionally. And that was one of them. Now, the main gets spotted. Again, these are 19-kilometer shots, okay? And yet, I'm still able to reach out and touch him, potentially. Now, Izumo and uh, the enemy FDG are pushing into the mid. So, we're getting ready to get into an up-close fight. Now, again, that is where this ship is at its best. If you can get up close and personal, this ship is nasty. It's got the ability to tank, and it has accurate enough big broadsides to do stuff like this. As we get, we reach out there and slap that Izumo for 10,000 damage. I know, it's not, it's not an American broadside. I mean, we're not shooting Kansas at him or Montana at him, okay? Or even Maine at him. We're shooting, you know, 420 millimeter guns, and uh, they, they slap. Like, if you can get them on target, they will do their job. And with our carrier harassing the guy, of course, with the FDG there and the Izumo, they don't have much in the way of AA. Uh, the guy who completely whiffs on the shot. I don't know if he's shooting me or the guy behind me. I can only assume that he shot the guy behind me here. Uh, but we're, we're going to uh, showcase that this thing is fully capable of brawling if done correctly. And obviously, we have our secondary booster ready to go if we need to use it. The FDG rolls up to support this guy. You can expect Will to rebuild being in full force here, at least on one of these guys. So we know that we can go through the cheek of this thing, much like a Yami. It has the Yami Hall, essentially, kind of. So if we can go through the cheek, we can generally get a Citadel on that Izumo. And that's how I've been punished the most in the Izumo so far. And you can see Izumo is struggling. He's getting shot from both sides. He's, these guys have drove right into a crossfire. Like, this is what you have to avoid when you're in a battleship. You cannot angle against both me and the teammate on the other side. So if you angle against me, well, then we also have the battleship on the right, who's about to come around the corner and have your flat broadside, as well as the guy on my left who's taking shots at your other broadside. So you have to pick your poison. Who do you need to angle against the most? I'm three kilometers away, so obviously he's angled against me. So that means, rather than trying to sit here and farm his superstructure for two or three, maybe 5k damage, I'm going to go ahead and look for other targets. My teammates are doing a good job. While we tank the damage, our teammates are doing a good job of softening the guy up. They've got much better angles than us. You can see when he does decide to start backing up, we, we soften him up again another 7k through the superstructure. We try to shoot over the island. We actually get it through the littlest gap ever and hit him for 9k. That's why we take those shots. Even when the game says you can't take this shot, you take those shots if you think you're going to be able to thread the needle. And you saw it right there, 9k. That's an extra 9k that we wouldn't have had. Now, in all of the work that we've done so far in this, we're just getting started. This game gets much, much better. 
We're gonna be up close and personal. We got a Jean Bart on our left. We've got the main on our right. Our main and their main, I think it's both mains, are going for a full speed ram on one another. So we're looking at Jean Bart here. Jean Bart is full broadside, and I've talked about this before. There you go, both mains go down in a ram. Jean Bart is susceptible to being Citadel. Unlike the Richelieu, which seems to never take Citadels, as you see, we punch him for a Citadel there. And we're trying to get the rear guns around. We also have torpedoes coming in from our destroyer. And the destroyer just screws the pooch here. You got to anticipate somebody taking off when you get spotted. Okay? You have to. Stacking all of your torpedoes at that range and not anticipating somebody moving forward, especially somebody who has an engine boost, is just dumb. You got to learn to do better, guys. And so we've already used our, engine, or our reload booster, and then we punched the Jean Bart through the back and managed to destroy one of his guns in the process. You know, sometimes you just get done that way in the Jean Bart, you know? It's just the thing. You get some weird ones. I'm not gonna lie, this Vimar snuck up on me. I did not see this guy. But you see, as soon as we recognize he's there, we punch that freaking sonar to make sure that we get away from him and avoid those torpedoes. We don't just sit there and sail in a straight line and take it. You can see I'm trying to beat the island. I know if I get a good shot, he's done, and we do manage to take him out. Now the Jean Bart comes around the other side. We've got our secondaries going on him. We've got our main guns going for him, and I figure this man's is dead. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I thought this guy was dead here. We do take one torpedo, and we burn our damage con like an idiot here. Only a single fire on us. I thought we were gonna get flooded there, which is why I burned the... the uh, damage con and that is going to come back and cost me my life shortly Frederick de Grossa out here is angled away from us which is actually the best possible thing he could do here uh, but he's gonna get over or he's over angled for my teammates if he's angled against me again when you have these crossfires it may not always be you getting the crossfire your teammates may get the crossfire we open up a little bit too much here to make sure we keep our secondaries, and now we're double fired. We've got our health just getting rapidly deteriorated, and again, we're just sitting broadside to this guy because at this point, I felt invincible. I'm like, I got one more heal to go. I'm gonna be able to get a damage con off. The Frederick goes down, and he hits me one more time, but we are double fired, and there's 30 seconds left, and I'm like, oh God, I have royally f***ed this up. And that's just, that, that comes with the, the territory. I'm, I'm not perfect. I always tell you guys when I screw up and uh, I try to point it out because it's a teaching moment. And this is a perfect example of a teaching moment. Uh, we end up losing, uh, or not losing, but we end up dying here solely due to our own mismanagement of our damage cons and uh, getting double fired by the secondaries of that FDG. Um, if we hadn't damage conned, maybe that didn't cause a flood and we just have a single fire burning and then we could have put it, put those out. But uh, is what it is. You can't always be perfect. And this somehow this freaking guy is still alive in a Jean Bart. I don't understand it either, but they finally kill him, leaving just the carrier left. And at this point, it's cleanup duty. You've got the Buffalo coming in from the right side. The battleship's going to close in from the left side, and they're going to easily be able to clean this guy up. Now, I haven't had that great standout game, but this is the best game that I've had uh, so far, at least that I know of, in the FDG. I like the ship a lot. I think it's going to be a pretty, pretty solid ship for the people, especially those that love those um, German battleships. If you love the German brawling battleships, you're going to love this ship, I promise. Uh, it is fantastic. I, I enjoy it. So if I enjoy it, what does that mean for these guys that actually love the Bismarck? You know what I'm saying? So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Which is your favorite tier 8 battleship? Um, now I've been getting asked a lot to go ahead and rank the, the tier 8 battleships from best to worst. If you guys want to see that in a video, let me know. Uh, I'll, I'll make that happen. We'll do like a tier list or something or at least go over each of the battleships um, in one video and showcase like why I think they rank the way they do and you know at the end of the day I'm just filling time so that these guys finally catch up to the carrier and sink this son of a gun but uh, yeah let me know what you guys think if you guys enjoy the tier 8 so far like are you guys enjoying your cruisers or your destroyers or your battleships let me know because I'm, I'm actually interested in finding out as the torpedo causes a flood on the buffalo luckily he has a damage con ready to go and uh, he's just shredding this guy's planes also I don't know if you guys noticed we did manage to shoot down 14 planes so we were pretty close to getting a, a clear skies there we could have survived a little bit longer I'm fairly confident we would have had it but uh, 
one one big mistake and uh, that's how it ends you know that's that's just all it is I can't blame anybody but myself for that if I hadn't damaged con there there's a pretty good chance that that wouldn't have been a flood it was an airdrop torpedo and uh, then I would have been able to survive that but you know you, you you make the mistakes you live and learn now the battleships managed to punch him and there you go Iowa finishes him off so again let me know what you guys think are you enjoying tier 8 what's your favorite ship so far and if you like what I'm doing 2200 base XP uh, I believe we were top of the leaderboard 137,000 damage and if you like what I'm doing punch the like button leave a comment below subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and as always I will see you in the next video